This talk was originally supposed to have been presented by Pankaj and Chi. Uh, neither of them could be here because of passport restrictions and visa restrictions and COVID and all that stuff. So the content and the talk was put together by Pankaj and Chi. I am uh, sharing the content that they put together. So I want to acknowledge that. Pankaj is the founder of Lab Computer and Chi is um, engineering manager at Elotal and I'm Chi's coworker. So in this talk, we'll go over um, what Lab Computer is, what they're trying to build, and why they chose Kubernetes as the basic building block for what they're building, and why they needed to federate Kubernetes and have Kubernetes clusters in multiple geographic locations, and um, what are the tooling uh, that they use to, uh, to manage and orchestrate across multiple Kubernetes clusters, and the lessons learned and best practices that uh, Lab Computer and Pankaj would like to share with the community. Lab Computer is an online IDE platform um, which is built as a SaaS product. It's a single portal for building educational content for students and instructors. They want to build an online platform so that it's easy for students and teachers to, um, to work on assignments and learn AI and machine learning concepts as the first domain uh, that they want to tackle. And they want to expand beyond um, AI and ML and include other STEM, uh, STEM subject matter um, concepts as well. So Lab Computer website is a SaaS portal. You log into a SaaS portal as an instructor and you create notebooks that have um, AI and machine learning uh, workloads. Um, and students can log on to the portal and they can learn AI and machine learning concepts using these pre-built notebooks. And uh, they can also submit their assignments and get graded. Um, they want to automate the grading process as well. So um, most of the graded assignments are automated. And it's easy for both students to access content and for teachers to automatically grade and bring about new coursework um, uh, assignments to students. So while building this notebook as a service, um, Pankaj and the team at Lab Computer had certain design goals. The first design goal is the user experience for the students. For as a student, they want the students to have the same user experience as if they had the coursework assignments on their local laptops, which means that they want to be able to spin up the assignment really quickly, run these machine learning workloads really quickly, and also checkpoint the state and be able to resume the assignments and homework two days later or a couple of months later. And from the instructor and teacher point of view, they want the teachers to be able to create content super easily and they want the teachers to expand beyond a set of machine learning workloads. They want to expand to other, other STEM subjects as well. And um, they also want grading to be super easy and automated as automated as possible. And from the lab computer operations team point of view, they want the lab computer team to be able to host uh, untrusted workloads assignments that are submitted by students and they want to be able to run it inside their cloud accounts with, um, without worrying about any kind of security issues. Um, so when they were looking at the basic building block for their infrastructure, the lab computer ended up choosing Kubernetes because uh, we are all here for KubeCon and Reject, so we don't need to be sold on Kubernetes, but it's nice to see someone that's trying to build a real world and use a product, uh, uh, making a really conscious, logical decision about picking Kubernetes. So the reason they went with Kubernetes is because it's, uh, uh, it's easy to switch between cloud providers and it is secure and there's a lot of community ecosystem in place for logging, monitoring and also when they want uh, to build an enterprise version of this product they would they would need to add in hooks for cost management stuff like that and billing and the ecosystem has hooks in place already so it was an easy decision for them to build uh, to pick Kubernetes as the basic building block. Um, once they decided on Kubernetes as the basic building blocks, the next 
question they had to answer was how do we make sure that a student that is residing in US West 1 um, it has the same kind of user experience as a student residing in Singapore or in Mumbai, India. Lab Computer is a startup that was born, that, uh, that was uh, created in San Francisco. So they started with US West 1 GKE cluster as their basic building block. But then they realized that sometimes a student would log in from Singapore and uh, the student would take 15 minutes for their for their uh, uh, for their notebook to pop up and that kind of latency latency was unacceptable they also received complaints from uh, other students say in eastern europe saying that sometimes they weren't network routes from eastern europe to us west one so um, not having the right network routing um, available plumbing available was another reason for thinking about creating multiple clusters in multiple geographic locations and the third reason is cost. Um, lab computer being a small startup, they were very cost conscious and they didn't care where the compute uh, was located as long as they were able to consume the low cost compute needed for their, um, their user notebooks, um, as long as it, it satisfied the user's uh, user notebooks resource requirements, as in I need X amount of CPU, Y amount of memory and this kind of GPU device. So as long as they were able to procure the right compute at the right price point. They wanted to be able to ship the workloads to the right availability zone that had the lowest cost compute. So once they decided to uh, create multiple Kubernetes clusters, they first started with expanding beyond US West 1 into um, a an availability zone in India. So they created their second GKE cluster in Mumbai. And once they had the second GKE cluster in Mumbai, they were thinking about, hey, how do we scale this beyond to Kubernetes clusters and how do we scale this to accommodate all the student workload requirements um, as we scale the company and as we scale our workloads. Um, they didn't want to treat each Kubernetes cluster as a pet and uh, hand manage each of these Kubernetes clusters. Their operational team is small and they didn't want to spend their time um, taking care of these Kubernetes clusters and nurturing these Kubernetes clusters as pets. They wanted to focus on building the, uh, the lab computer platform and adding on more coursework notebooks to their platform. So that's where Nova comes in. Nova is a policy driven scheduler that schedules your pods across multiple Kubernetes clusters. So as a user, you supply your pod manifest um, and you either annotate it or you specify a policy saying, hey, these are my uh, requirements for my pod for the pods compute. So you can say, I want a low cost pod policy or you can say, uh, you can specify applications SLA requirements as in my notebook needs to start up within five seconds. And what Nova does is it schedules the pod to the right cluster cluster in the right availability zone in the right region in the right cloud provider that honors the applications SLAs and that honors the, the user defined policies as well. So um, Lab Computer decided to, um, to, fed, to manage the federated Kubernetes clusters using Nova. So the way Nova is architected is you have a single control plane which speaks Kubernetes API server and all Kubes, kubectl and other client requests hit the API server for the Nova control plane and you have workload clusters. So what Nova does is it, it enables you and empowers you to, uh, to treat workload clusters as cattle as opposed to pets. So if you think about the idea of, of, uh, of of uh, commoditizing compute for a single Kubernetes cluster. Nova takes this concept uh, one level beyond and it commoditizes workload clusters for a federation of Kubernetes clusters. So each of the workload clusters has a Nova agent. So from the end user point of view, the workload clusters are commodity as long as the workload cluster is um, honoring the user defined policies and the SLAs for your application. It doesn't matter which workload cluster your user app is scheduled to. 
So when you look at how the federation of Kubernetes clusters is managed by NOVA and is exposed to user, if you think about it from a student point of view, uh, let's say a student is opening, uh, is creating a new lab computer account and he is located in Mumbai, India. So he his request for creating the lab computer account hits the the controller for lab computer. Lab computer converts that request into a pod manifest format with the right user defined policies. And those uh, and the pod manifest is sent over to Nova. Nova will schedule the pod to the GKE cluster that's running inside, uh, that, that's running in, in uh, Mumbai region. And the user's pod is scheduled over to that GKE cluster. So you get the regionality that you want the user to experience. Um, and from from the user point of view, it's their uh, latency problems are solved, their uh, lack of network routing issues is solved, and the cost um, uh, the cost issues from lab computer are also solved because lab computer added the user defined policy of hey I let uh, ship this part to the low cost compute in that region. So here is a demo of um, how labs, lab computer staging environment is configured to work with Nova. Um, I'm, this has been narrated by uh, Pankaj, so I want you guys to hear it in his voice. So I'm going to play the recorded demo. Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to show how lab computer utilizes a Nova control plane to distribute notebooks across multiple Kubernetes clusters in different geographies. We will also show how users in different geographies launch notebooks in the Kubernetes cluster closest to them. So here we have a Nova control plane with three clusters attached, out of which we are going to use two to power our staging environment. Let's look at the first cluster. The first cluster is running in India. You can see that with the geography, which is Asia South 1. The second cluster is running in the US. You can see that by US West 1. Now you can see that this is an RDP session that is running in, in India. Mumbai and we'll launch the notebook here. This is my local machine running in California and we'll launch the second notebook from here. We'll wait for the launches to finish. Now the India browser will go to a notebook running in India. You can see that from the ingress prefix India. You can also see that from the pods running in the India cluster. So you will see that a new pod came up 36 seconds ago. Now let's see the US website. This is running in the US. You can see that by the pods running in the US, you will see that a notebook came up in the US as well. So this way we can let our users connect to their nearest clusters and get the best experience. We are also going to make our, our sharding Nova aware so that this can be distributed across uh, multiple of our courses so that different courses can be in different geographies without the user even realizing it. All right, I hope that uh, demo was audible. Hi everyone, in this Oops. video we are going to show
So um, some of the lessons learned from Lab Computer's platform team by using Kubernetes as the basic building block and using multiple Kubernetes clusters across multiple geographic locations and trying to federate it using a single um, single Nova control plane. Um, the easy wins for them were that uh, Kubernetes provided them with, uh, enabled them to go to market pretty quickly. Um, and Federating using Nova Control Plane also eliminated the operational complexity for their operations team so that they didn't have to treat each individual Kubernetes cluster as a pet that has to be hand managed. And it also reduced their operational cost of their cloud bills um, because Nova would automatically ship to the right uh, cluster that had the lowest compute that satisfied the resource requirements for each pod. Um, some of the things that they wish to share with the community about federating is the notebooks especially have state associated with them. So if, if the, if the uh, student wants to pause their assignment and pick it back up two months later, um, that worked fine when they were restricted to a single Kubernetes cluster um, in US West 1 on GKE. Uh, they used ClusterFS for sharding across multiple nodes. So any node in that single Kubernetes cluster could access the um, checkpointed state. But when you uh, when you take this checkpointed state across multiple Kubernetes clusters that are geographically dispersed, um, they have to think about how to shard their cluster FS um, cluster across multiple Kubernetes clusters. So it is time consuming. So um, if you are planning to federate across multiple Kubernetes clusters, um, creating a plan for how do you handle state if you have stateful workloads, um, that would save you a lot of time ahead of time instead of arriving at the problem after you have created a federated Kubernetes environment.